Last night on MasterChef Australia, Billy went head to head with a veteran of the Bake Off, and she walked away with the immunity pin. I won, and I am going to treasure that for the rest of my life. Tonight, it's a team challenge. Your first proper catering job. <gasps> Each team at a very different event, but both have the same goal. Come on, boys, they're ready to go. Deliver what the client asks for. I asked for it to come out at a quarter to one. It's now 10 to one. We've forgotten two of the main ingredients for Alana's dishes. Danny's still not back. She's lost it, she's not organised, she's running around. This is their 21st birthday cake, and we've screwed that up. I don't know if you're going to get food out at all. Hi. Hello. Opening the door, Matt Preston's standing there. What is he doing here? Usually we don't have visitors. Last time was George woke us up at 12 midnight. Come on, guys. Let's go. I think, yeah, might be a challenge coming up. Good afternoon. I think you might have gathered by now that I'm not here to borrow half a cup of sugar. <laughs> I'm here to reveal your next challenge. So far in this competition, you've taken your briefs from us, the judges. Not today. Today, we're throwing you out into the real world. Today, you're getting to do your first big, proper catering job. Oh, oh, wow. It's quite a difficult thing, catering, if it works well. You don't notice the amount of effort that's gone into it. Whereas if it goes wrong, it can be a disaster. You'll be divided into two teams, and each team will be given a very different type of client and a very different type of event. The blue team will cater a silver service, three-course corporate lunch for 12. The red team will be catering a 21st party for 50 guests. I hope I get the 21st because I think that I can relate more to the client than a corporate businessman. <laughs> to the side, the teams were using the old upstairs downstairs method. <laughs> Everyone who sleeps downstairs will be the blue team, and you'll be in the corporate lunch. Michael, come and get the blue team's opens. I probably know the guys living on the ground floor better than I know anyone in the house. We kind of know each other's strengths and weaknesses, and we're very close. The rest of you from the floor above, you'll be the red team and you'll be doing the 21st. Right, time to choose your captains. In this challenge, the captain's job is huge. The captains will go and meet the clients. They will take the briefing on what the client wants. Whether you win or whether you lose in this challenge depends on the captain getting the right information and understanding the client's needs. Off you go. I'm happy to do it. Yeah, yeah, you will be the most experienced. Turn on the charm. Turn on the charm and uh, get all the information. I think Peter's going to make a good captain today because he's been in that corporate world. He knows the language, the lingo. So I think he's the perfect choice. I think it would be good in terms of trying to suss out exactly what kind of 21st yeah. it's yeah. going to be. Scary as it is. Yeah, it's really <laughs> I'll be happy yeah. to do it. If there's ever a challenge that Ellie's going to be suited to, this is the one. I celebrated my 21st birthday in the MasterChef house and it was a rock and roll theme. Everyone made beautiful food and it was great fun. 
I think being 21 um, will definitely help me relate to the client. So I think I'm going to be a pretty good captain. Both events will happen tomorrow. How we decide who wins this challenge comes down to three things. How you perform in the kitchen, how good the food is, but ultimately, the team that satisfies their client's brief the best will be declared the winner. That winning team gets a fantastic prize. They'll be whisked up the Hawkesbury River to Barrow Waters Inn for lunch. Then they'll get a private masterclass <laughs> with Dietmar Sawyer, who for two decades has been one of Sydney's best chefs. The entire losing team will go into an elimination where one of them will go home, leaving the competition on the verge of making it into the top 10 of MasterChef 2011. This is the challenge to win. If there's going to be any challenge in MasterChef, we've got to win this so that we get into the top 10. Team captains, your clients are waiting. Let's go. Yeah. Ellie and I are headed in different directions. Ellie's off to her 21st birthday party briefing, and I'm going downtown to Alan's Arthur Robinson, a very high-end legal office. I'm Michael. Michael, Peter from MasterChef. Good day, nice Peter. To meet you. I'm ushered into the boardroom and I meet Michael, the chief executive partner at the firm. So can you tell me a little bit more about the lunch? We act for a lot of corporate clients. We also act for more than 100 community groups. And what we like to do is bring the leaders of those community groups together with the leaders of our clients. Yeah. So that's what this lunch is going to be about. OK. It's a meeting of Corporate Australia with charitable organisations where they can see how they can possibly help each other in the future. The way lunches at our firm tend to work is we start them at about 12.30. Yes. We get people sitting down by, I don't know, 20 to 1, quarter to 1. So, so the durations between courses, you're looking at 15, 15 minutes, would you say? The really important thing, I suppose, is to get people away at 2 o'clock. OK. Did you have any ideas on, on the kind of food that you would be looking at? I think the preference is, is for a lighter lunch. Lighter, um, of course. Michael has let me know in no uncertain terms that everyone is going to leave at 2. Brilliant. And so you can't stagger back to the office loaded down with heavy food. Even though we're doing three courses, the portions need to be very small. Hi, I'm Amy from Cloud9 Event Management. Nice to meet you. I'm nice Ellie. You. Hi, Ellie. This challenge is all about working in the real world, and so that means that I need to ask the right questions, otherwise I'm going to let my team down right from the start. So, I guess the 21st tomorrow night. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. yep. um, who's the girl who's having it, or boy? It's actually twins. Twins? OK. Yep. Mm -hmm. Girl and a guy. Right, OK. Are they looking for more canapé-type foods? Canapé menu, finger food, great. Finger food, yep. Um, but, yeah, ensuring that that is substantial is important. And have they got a um, cake organised at all? No. But we do want an element of excitement to right. the food. If you can think about the way that you can um, involve people in food. OK. Not necessarily all of the food, but some of it. I think I've got what I need, and so it's time to go home and brief the team. So we have a pretty big job ahead of us. We have to have a range, a selection of about eight to ten canapes. We do have to make a cake. Ellie runs in and she's freaking out. She just starts burbling information at us and it's like a sledgehammer. She wanted something that's going to really excite people. What do you mean? I don't know. Like, she, she said, you know, you have to involve people in it. We have to come up with something that involves all the guests in the food. The team looks totally confused and I don't know whether I've let them down already. Uh, you know those love heart lollies that have, like, little messages like, you're cute and... I love you and stuff like that. Maybe we can make cupcakes with little messages on them. That's a great oh. idea! And then we could yeah. even leave a few little pens out with some blank cupcakes and they could write little oh. messages. Oh! That's the best! I love it! 12.30, they arrive. 12.45, they're seated. They have to be out of there no later than 2. That's only an hour 15 minutes from the time that they sit down. Peter comes back with quite a lot of information, actually. We, we know what the client wants, and we, we just start throwing ideas at each other. I actually thought seafood was a good place to start. What about your confit? The oh, this is the confit abortion trout. It's pretty amazed how we all just put up a menu, like, instantly. I think I can, like, a, a, a short rib or a beef chick. Beef chicks? Beef chicks? It's hearty. It's man food. But if the portions are small, it'll be fine. If we stay organised and really know where we're headed, we will walk this in.
Coming up, it's corporate versus cocktail. As the two teams battle against time... People are leaving at two. ..to please their clients, their guests and the judges. Are you joking? No. Today, the blue team are catering a corporate function for 12 people. I'm taking Michael with me as my assistant shopper, and our budget is $1,000. How much butter do we need? Five. Shopping's the first big part of this challenge. If we don't get every ingredient necessary, <laughs> we're going to be in trouble. What's the total? $411.70. $100, $200. Thank you. Thank you very much. We leave Colds and head to Victor Churchill. Wow which is some fantastic butchers, and we're looking for beef cheeks, and we've really got our fingers crossed that they've got them and they've got enough. And, and they do. And it's lunch, so it's going to be a I've got everything we need for the day. The challenge is to do a three-course light lunch for a legal firm in the city. This is the way. We walk into the kitchen and Right from the start, Peter, he's a great team leader. Prep list? Thank you. The guests are going to sit down at 12.45, so we've got three hours ahead of us to do this meal. Peter, how are you going? I'm good, I'm um, good. You've got a corporate lunch to do. You had a briefing with Michael, chief executive partner. Did you get all the information you needed out of him so that you can cook a great lunch? I hope so. We've actually designed a, a meal that's quite light and fresh. We're starting with a confit of ocean trout with a uh, fennel and apple salad. And then we're doing a, a braised a beef cheek on a celerac puree. Dessert, uh, Billy's handling of a course. chocolate tart. Of, of course. course. Strange. Yeah, yeah. Strange. <laughs> Strange. 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 You know, well, that, that sounds like a bit, it's quite a, a heavy meal, you know. The big question is, is it going to keep you out of an elimination? I really need the album. Hey, Coombs. Come on, you're gonna have to get on it. Kumar is very much like the tortoise and the hare. He always comes out a winner, but he's so slow out of the blocks. Billy needs to get in the oven. I've got to get Kumar's confit of ocean trout out of the oven within 25 minutes for Billy to have two and a half hours in the oven. Peter, how have you organised the kitchen? OK, well, I've broken it into sections. This is Billy's behind you, and that's going to be a sort of pastry section. He's actually waiting for Kumar to finish on the top oven. The bottom oven is assigned to Michael and his beef cheeks. The thing that I'm thinking about at the moment is the fact that you really don't have that long to go before lunch, and the beef cheeks aren't in. Braising something's not just about cooking it, it's also about resting it. That's so right. it soaks all of its the juices up. Good okay. luck. Come on, let's move a little quicker. Come on. The beef cheeks have just gone in the oven, and it's really going to be tight whether the, well, we'll get them done in time, but fingers crossed uh, we will. You guys are all on schedule at this point? Looking good, yeah. Do, does anyone have a problem that they're, they're wrestling with? No, what what are you cheese, worried about? Just the beef cheeks being cooked, but they're in time. there. Time. They're in there. Time, time. time. Yeah. <laughs> it should be all right once the coffee time. out. The bread's right. Get it in. Today I'm making a chocolate tart. It has three layers. On the bottom is like a choc fudge with hazelnut and then the second layer is the chocolate cream, and on top we just um, finish with a uh, chocolate glacé. The tart has to be twice. Unfortunately, start from the beginning, the whole dish already has been pushed back, so it's very possibility that it's not going to set on time. There's two events today. We're here at the first, which is the corporate event, and the blue team are running it. They're doing braised beef cheek, which takes a good couple of hours yep. to braise beautifully. They're pushing the envelope a bit. I'm not sure it's going to be cooked in time. Gary, my concern is lightness. Yeah, you know, it's confit, confit trout onto braised beef cheek, onto a chocolate tart. Is the menu light enough for a business lunch? The other crucial thing when you're running a little corporate event like this, especially at lunchtime, is timing. They need the entree by 12.45, main 105, dessert 135, gone by two. This challenge is all about understanding the client brief, being organised in the kitchen, and of course, the taste of the food. You have one hour to go. I have the chocolate cream in the oven for the second baking. It's not set, but oh, there's not much I can do. 
The only way for me to catch up is to quickly put in the fridge and hopefully it will set on time. It always comes down to time. We have a couple of dishes that need a lot of time to reach their peak. Why not pick something where we can all have a cup of tea before service? Why not? We're going to have the first course, Kuma, yes. on that table at 12.45. So yeah. you have to have every single element ready to go at 12.30. Watching him today, I definitely see the different side of Peter. Come on, let's move a little quicker. Come on. I, I thought he's going to be just a sales guy, good at talking with clients, but actually he's quite good at leading a, a team. Yes, yes. Peter. Yes. 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 yes, Peter. Thank you. Hey, Andrew. Hey. Good. Nice Good to see you. How are you? Thank you. Lovely to see you. Mm, thank Thanks you for inviting us. Thank you. <laughs> It's 12.30 and the guests are waiting just outside the dining room for their lunch and it's anxious times. It's when all your hard work starts to pay off. You've got 15 minutes before that first course needs to be on the table. And can I tell you, it's your reputation and of course it's Master Chefs. Go blue team. Yes, yes chef. chef. Billy, let's go. While the chocolate tart is cooling in the fridge, um, start helping Peter to play up the first dish. Perfect, that's perfect. perfect. Just yeah. balances it out like that. We're, we're a little bit behind, but, you know, I'm trying to get as close as I possibly can to perfect. What time is the entree supposed to come out? Well, um, I asked for it to come out at a quarter to one. The that's, time now? It's now ten to one. I know that some of you have some time constraints. So, so we're right. hoping it's going to arrive shortly. No, finish it off. You're just going to kill the next course if you run over. It, it, it's time. I have to send it over. Waiters, waiting. People are leaving at two. What time is the entree supposed to come out? Well, um, I asked for it to come out at a quarter to one. The it's, time now? It's now ten to one. I know that some of you have some time constraints. So, so we're I'm right. hoping it's going to arrive shortly. No, finish it off. You're just going to kill the next course if you run over. The timing for business meetings is, is crucial because uh, these ladies and gentlemen expect to leave at a certain time. Service? And that time today is 2 o'clock. Seeing those entrees roll out the door, beautiful. Uh, what a way to start off the day. Kumar's done a treat and, you know, as we always say, slow and steady wins the race and um, boy, I hope we win this race. So this is ocean trout, it's not ocean trout. Well, this, this is the entree. It's a confit of ocean trout on an apple and fennel salad. Enjoy lunch, everybody. Bon appetit. Tonight, it's about six and a half people. It's all over the world. People all the time at boarding school there on a permanent basis. Yeah, actually, that's not a bad idea. Michael, first course, the confit ocean trout. It was light, mm. um, really tasty. We all managed to concentrate on the conversation while we are enjoying it. So yeah. uh, it's absolutely what I had in mind. I'm really happy with that. Our main is a beef cheek on a celeriac puree. It's tender, but it looks too big to me. That's a... Is it too messy? It's a big piece of meat. You know, a little tiny medallion of meat. That's what it needs to be. You think it's too big? No, look, it's fine. It's fine. There is no turning back at this point. I can't redesign it. It just has to go out. So, Billy, you're just waiting, right? Just waiting, yeah. Can you work on the uh, service with Michael? Because we are five minutes behind, basically, we have five minutes short to get the main course up, so we have to really work fast now. Come on, boys. They're ready to go. Michael, when was the main course scheduled to appear? To have people back where they need to be on time, uh, I would have thought we needed to see the main meal by now. But we were waiting a little bit for the first course, and it was well worth the wait. Beef cheeks should have been about five past, and I think it's now about 1.15. I need help here. Hayden Gremolino on this one. You know, the great thing is we're actually working as a team. This is how a kitchen operates. Come on. This one's good to go. A little bit behind, but um, I'm very happy with my main. It went out really well, and um, the beef was really tender. That was a big worry. But the thing about that is it's going to take them a little while to eat, so it's put us behind a bit more. Um, so it's going to be a real nail biter to get the dessert out in time. Beautiful, guys. Thank you, service. Let's get on to that dessert, boys, quick. Slow cooked beef cheek on a celeriac puree with roast beetroot. Very passionately about the smoothie organisation does very well. He was, he was just fantastic. First, I'd say it was fantastic to eat because it was. It was delicious. 
but I, I think it's too heavy. I couldn't get through it all. <laughs> yeah. OK, guys, you need to start plating up. Maine's coming to uh, a close. I need dessert plated and ready to go because we've lost time. People are leaving at 2. How are you going? Billy looks really anxious, and I'm thinking, oh, you know, what now? Dessert is not set. What do you mean it's not set? It is very important for the tart to set. If not, I will be serving a river of chocolate sauce, basically. Uh, I'm just trying to find a solution. We just have to cut it and then see how it goes. So I cut through the tart, and I pull my knives out. It's not set. Oh. You can just see all the sticky chocolate mousse stuck to the knife. But, you know, we just have to serve it one way or another. We're going to have to put a chocolate scoop on. That's not such a bad idea. Yeah, look at that. That's pretty... It's like Rocky That's Road. sort of sexy. I think that looks great, but it needs That's to be smaller. 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 Yeah. Yeah. The trouble is, yeah. uh, really? your you guests to got to go back to work soon. Michael has already dressed the plates with the coolie, so even though we've got this rough and ready elements, we've got ksh, ksh, that should, you know, give it some structure. All right, service. Thank you. To see the last dish out of the kitchen uh, is a big relief. I think we did a great job, actually. We did serve good dishes. The chocolate tart with creme fraiche and orange cutie. Michael, when you read chocolate tart on the menu, what did, what did you have an image of appearing? Certainly wasn't expecting something as heavy as this. I, f I found this quite heavy and, and quite rich. Well done. I was really proud watching you guys. You worked really, really well. Tomorrow there'll be a debrief. You know, at the end of the day, the people out there are judging on the taste. <laughs> we'll judge on how you guys worked in the kitchen and, of course, your understanding of the brief. I've put myself out there being captain today. I want all of us to go to that top ten. Oh, <laughs> now, now, we've, now we've just got to win. Oh, yes. No, we have to clean up first. Yeah, yeah, we have to clean up first. Today's massive. The red team are catering a 21st for 50 people. I'm the captain. We've got $1,000 and half an hour to shop. Okay, oh, prawns. Prawns, um, okay, we need... We're trying to make 10 canapes and up to 100 of, of each of those. So that's 1,000 canapes. You know, you got oysters. Hang on, should we get oysters? I don't, were there oysters there? Yeah, there were oysters there. If we miss out an ingredient, that could change our whole menu. So we have to get this right. We have $250 left to spend, and we need a fillet of beef. Plenty. Yeah, plenty. It's beautiful. We've got $100 left over for our budget, so we look around and chat to the butcher about how we could spend this money. We're doing we do. canapes. We've actually yep. covered our menu yep. now, which is really good, but yep. we've got $100 left, yep. and we're here. <laughs> so we need something, something very quick. simple. Yeah. Um, you could go with the terrines here. The butcher suggests to us that we might like to use a rabbit terrine and a red wine compote. Which ones to go with it? Yes, please. In my mind, I'm focused completely on making this 21st as beautiful as we possibly can for the guests. There you go. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks very Have much. Great you too. See you later. Bye. Kind of forgotten that I'm in a MasterChef competition. Hi. 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 How'd you go? How'd you go? Good. We've got heaps of stuff. Oh my okay. gosh. Here you go. Stop. Guys, this is where the party is. I've never really been to a 21st that looks like this before. My 21st was in my parents' backyard. <laughs> Should I go see the kitchen? Yep. Yep. Yes. It's four o'clock, guests are arriving in three hours. It all starts now. <laughs> the dishes I'm making tonight are red velvet cupcakes and coconut prawns. I'm unpacking, I have the flour, I've got the sugar, the butter. Have we got the food colouring in another bag? <gasps> oh, my God. We forgot the food colouring. How do you make red velvet cupcakes without red food dye? This is their 21st birthday cake, and we've screwed that up. Sorry, Alana. Oh, that's sorry. That's so, so sorry. We'll just, we'll just, they've got plenty of other stuff we can think of. Got... The red velvet cupcakes are stuffed. I haven't checked my stuff for my prawns yet. I open my bag and there's no coconut for the coconut prawns. Is there coconut? Elle, did you pick up coconut? Oh, my God. 
We've forgotten two of the main ingredients for Alana's dishes. I feel like this is just the worst way to start. Is there Elle, coconut? Elle, did you pick up coconut? Oh, my God. It's three hours till service. We've forgotten two of the main ingredients for Alana's dishes. Coconut for her coconut prawns and red food colouring for her red velvet cupcakes. The cupcakes. This is the 21st birthday cake and we've screwed that up. How, how far away is Coles? My meatballs are really simple to make. They're quick. Danny, if you have time to go, I think that you should probably should. I reckon like, I'll just go, run in, get them, come back. I don't have much time. I need to get back into the kitchen as quick as I can. Ellie, who are you cooking for? OK, we're cooking for twins today. It's their 21st. OK. Ooh, boys, girls, what are they? Um, boy and a girl. We have a good menu um, set out and okay. I think everyone knows what they have to do. Good luck. We have ten canapes to do plus dessert. It is stressing me out a lot that we, we are one man down at the moment and, yeah, we've got a lot to do. Son's in charge of caramelised onion and feta tartlets and the dip. I'm doing a roast capsicum and feta dip. Matt will be taking care of the duck spring rolls and the roast beef and horseradish cream. I'm trying to multitask. Kate will be in charge of tomato, olive tapenade, crostini and spiced chocolate mousse cakes. Alana's dishes are the red velvet cupcakes and the coconut prawns. I've got plenty I can prep, so time's not lost. Not much. <laughs> And my dishes are pear and blue cheese blinis and the rabbit terrine and red onion compote. I'm really nervous that it's five o'clock and we're, no re we're not really anywhere near what I want to be. Danny's still not back. She's been gone an hour. She still has her meatballs to prep and the oysters to do. Ellie? Yeah? I'm freaking out. I'm running around the kitchen helping Matt. Uh, maybe maybe you can use that one. Seeing what Sun is doing, seeing what Kate's doing. I do, I do need more bowls. And I've got these bellinis in the back of my mind that have to be done, and things are just falling apart. Oh, my God. So we're standing on the balcony of this beautiful function centre, 21st birthday party. Ali's the captain of the red team, and in comparison to Peter, who was the Ooh. captain of the blue team, yeah. there's a big difference here. She's preparing two of the dishes and trying to keep on top of everyone else. Has Ali taken on too much? All right. Let's see how they get it together. And back! Hey! Walking back into the kitchen, it seems like the stress levels are going through the roof. We really need to pull ourselves together and get moving. Poor red colouring. <laughs> Perfect. Right, it's time to get straight onto my red velvet cupcakes because they need to get into the oven so they can cool and they can be iced. I love these red velvet cupcakes. Are they going to love them out there? I think they will. The client had asked that we provided something that was interactive. We've got little um, icing pens mm. and they can write little messages to each other. It's a 21st birthday, so you want something special and something memorable. This is going to be a big night. 21st twins celebrating their birthday. 50 people to cater for. One and a half hours to go. What have you got there? Um, this is rabbit terrine. How long have you been cooking for? An hour and a half. How did you make a rabbit terrine in an hour and a half? We didn't make it. We had left, leftover money, so we just thought... You bought um, a terrine? Yes. You bought a terrine and you put... What's that on the top? Cornishin. No, no, what's that on there? Our red onion compote. When did you get the red onion compote? We bought it. Are you joking? No. I can't believe we didn't think about this earlier. We haven't made any of this dish. I just want to crawl into a hole and not just run away from this challenge. Use the whisk. I don't know where it is. I've got it over there. We are all working so hard, but it just feels like it's not coming together. Ellie? Yeah, what do you want? Can you help me with the pulling all the duck off? Pulling all the duck off? Yeah. Yeah. 
Ellie's being pulled in so many directions. She's trying to do some Blini, she's trying to keep in touch with what everybody's up to. We just don't have the direction that we need to push us through. Guys, can I just stop you for a minute? I think you need to regroup. Remember, there's 50 guests that are going to come in. Yeah. OK, and you want to blow their socks off with the food. Otherwise, yeah. you're going to end up in elimination. It's on to rah-rah. Lift okay. your shoulders up, guys, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Start Boys. looking after each other. Come already. on. The guests are going to be here soon. Our menu's printed. We're all feeling really disheartened. The only thing I can focus on is the fact that I've been in this position before in MasterChef. And somehow, I don't know how, but we usually manage to bring it together. Amy, the event organiser, said very clearly the first food has to leave the kitchen at 7 o'clock. You have half an hour to go. Let's start to push. There's still got so much to do. Like, people are just starting to plate up. I don't... I've still got... I'm still cooking blinis. There's just... Oh, I don't think we anticipated how much work was actually involved in this party. Ellie, our guests are starting to arrive. These are your um, wait staff for this Hi. evening. Hi. Um, if you'd like to brief them, leave them okay. with you. Thanks right. very much. Thank you. When I see those waiters come through the door, like, go away and come back in half an hour. We have nothing to give them. Nothing's ready yet. Today's challenge is fulfilling a catering brief. The red team is catering for a 21st birthday party for twins, and we need to satisfy that client brief. Otherwise, we're going to end up in elimination. Stephanie, Dennis, this is your party. It is. What are you hoping for? What are you expecting the red team to do for tonight? Well, I mean, a party's always about good people, good fun, but tonight we're also really looking forward to good food. Guys, this has been a long, hard day, but hey, 7 o'clock, room full of people, it ain't over yet. Come on. This is definitely the hardest challenge for me so far in the competition. I have taken on too many responsibilities. I shouldn't have been doing a dish at all, but I need to just get these blinis done so that I can focus on getting food out. All right, so um, the first thing to go out, we yeah. just want these on the tables. Oh, on the um, tables, yes. okay. The roast capsicum and feta dip and fennel toast. We get the first dish out the door. Yay! <laughs> this is actually the moment where, okay, we've got something out, we can do it again. <laughs> I quite like it. Fantastic. Full of flavour. The bread wasn't too crispy, but a little bit crispy, and that's how I like bread. Ali, are you happy for these to go out? Yes, I am. Five minutes later, we've got our second dish out, and that's the oysters. Hooray, that's something else out. I thought it was delicious. I really enjoyed the oysters. Very tasty. Up next is a crostini. Yep, it's... Five and minutes. a tray of blinis, which I'm doing now. Our service plan is all the cold food first and then bring out all the hot food later. Thank, Thank you. you. And that's tomato, olive tapenade, crostini. Yes. Caramelised pear and blue cheese blinis. <laughs> and the roast beef and horseradish cream. I think I've had one before. Thank you. The roast beef and the horseradish, that was really, really nice. Had to go back for seconds. We're certainly getting a lot of food. Yeah, absolutely. And that was quite tasty, so I enjoyed, enjoyed that. Come okay, on, well, guys, we've got to go faster. I think the key is with the 21st is to have a lot of food coming out at the right times. We thought that these types of food is something that the people will enjoy after they've had maybe a few drinks. Unfortunately, we've made a mistake in our planning where there's three dishes, prawns, spring rolls and meatballs, that require the deep fryer at the same time. Oh, you're using the fryer now? Yeah. Oh. OK. 
So at some point in the evening, waiters are standing there and no food to go out. Let's keep moving. OK. Come on, yes, guys, girl. we can do it. I am the captain and it's going to be my responsibility to turn this around. OK, so these are ready to go? Yeah. I don't have a dish to worry about anymore, so I'm going to be on every single person. All right, guys, we need more food to go out. Guys, let's hope we get some good feedback off the spring rolls. They look great. You have one hour to go. Come on, let's make it a good hour. It feels as though finally we've got ourselves working as a team with only about an hour to go. I'm hoping it's not too little too late. Guys, you got some you got some spring rolls? Yes, yeah. How are they? Oh, they're really nice. They're nice, the aren't they? Really spicy. spicy sauce. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Full master flavour. Yeah, gorgeous. Thank you. Oh, they look gorgeous, Alana. The prawns yeah. and the, the dipping sauce. I'm so glad that I sent Danny to Coles because those prawns look and taste beautiful. You know, what I really like about this menu, they've left the fried food till last. Delicious. Those prawns. They drop beautiful. dead gorgeous. Yeah. yeah, they were. Drop dead gorgeous. I love that. I've had so much that I'm quite full now. Two thumbs up. Big day today. Two teams, red and blue. The blue looking after a small corporate function. On the other side of that, a 21st birthday party for twins. But you know, they're being judged on exactly the same criteria. Yep. They're being judged on how they perform in the kitchen, on the taste of the food when it comes out, but also, most importantly, how they fulfilled the brief given to them by their clients. With only red velvet cupcakes still to come, has the red team met the brief? Without a cert, we want to involve everyone in it. So what we're going to do is we have um, white icing, we have gel pens, and we're going to write messages. And then we're going to leave a few spare so that people can write messages on them themselves. There's huge pressure to make sure that the red velvet cupcakes are absolutely perfect. It's not only the birthday cake, but it also is our interactive component of the client brief that we're trying to fill. So this is the birthday cake and the finale for the twins. Let's hope they love it. OK, All let's right. go, guys. Let's go. We've left some spare. Um, we've got gel pens here, so go nuts. Cake is my favourite thing in the entire world. I thought it was the best thing we had all night, but it's really because I like sweets. It's been wonderful, it really has. I mean, we've been with good people, we've had good food. It's been a brilliant night. Yeah. Matt, we saved you some cupcakes. Thank you very much. <laughs> Lovely. Thank you. We'll let you know how both teams went tomorrow, but for now, let's go home and hit the hay. Right. Thanks, Amy. Well done, Captain. There has been many points today where it has felt like a complete disaster, but somehow we've managed to pull it together. The guests haven't seen the chaos in the kitchen. They've only tasted the food, which has been really, really nice. So we might have pulled this one off. Red team, blue team, welcome back to the MasterChef kitchen. Yesterday, you faced a tough initiation into the wonderful world of catering. The challenge was to cater two separate but very important events. Blue team, you had to cook a corporate lunch for 12 guests. Red team, a 21st for 50 guests. The judging criteria was simple. You were judged on how you performed in the kitchen, how good the food tasted, and most importantly, how you fulfilled the brief. I think we're going to get in a bit of trouble today. I think, you know, it was really chaotic. Whilst tasty, I just think that we could have done something more. For the winning team, the prize is a cracker. You're going to get on a boat, cruise up the beautiful Hawkesbury River, and stop at a lovely little restaurant called Barara Waters for a lunch. 
Not only that, you get a private masterclass <laughs> with Deep Marsoya, who's been one of this country's top chefs for more years than I can remember. Unfortunately, the downside is that if you lose today, the whole team will face an elimination. And the kicker on this one is that one of you will be going home just before we get into the top 10 of MasterChef Australia. This close to the top 10, the last thing you want to do is end up in that elimination. Before we reveal the results, let's look at how each team fared in the judging criteria. Blue team, let's start with you. From a chef's perspective, yes. you were clean, you were organised, and you worked really, really hard to make sure you put out the best food that you possibly could. The direction from you, Peter, as the captain, was brilliant. Well done. Thanks. Gary seems really impressed with our performance in the kitchen. We did a challenge very early on in the competition at the Mean Fiddler. It was chaos. It was absolutely chaos. It's like a circus! And I can look at the food that we produced yesterday. That's a great step forward. What a blistering start. That first coarse dish tasted delicious. The lights look pretty as a picture. But, Peter, if you had to sum up your client brief, what would it be? It needed to be light. People were going back to the office. Beef cheeks, followed by chocolate tart. Is that your light kind of food? I had hoped that the portioning would get us through that. Do you know what? You can go out and eat something that's that big, but if it's exceptionally rich, it's still heavy. Yeah, yeah. Braised beef cheeks, chocolate tart. Doesn't scream light to anyone, really, does it? And we should have realised. So let's look at the red team. You couldn't find two totally different approaches if you tried. Ellie, were you out of your depth as a leader, as the captain? Um, I think that at the beginning, for about an hour, I certainly was. The judges want the best people in this competition in the top ten. I think that we should have done a better job yesterday. Hope I never have to say this again. This is MasterChef. We don't buy stuff, chop it up and put it on a plate. That terrain, disaster. I feel absolutely terrible about what happened in the challenge. If we lose, every single person in the team will be facing elimination. Ellie, if you had to sum up your briefing from your client, what was it? It was canapes. Some of them had to be quite substantial. We had to have a canapé that was in interactive, that everyone could kind of enjoy and... Um, Play around with. Yeah, play around with. As the captain, I feel totally responsible if we lose because I met with the client. I don't know if we really fulfilled the brief properly. Out of the ashes of your kitchen chaos, Rose Phoenix-like, some fantastic food. Standing with Amy, who was your client, watching the food come out, she was, oh, that looks good. That works well. And those cupcakes topped off the night. Was it enough and was it too late? I'm trying to put a brave face on for the rest of the team, but there's always that kind of voice in the back of my head that's like, no, I don't think you won. We've weighed everything up and we've made a decision about who has won this challenge. I really want to win. The reward lunch sounds fantastic, but really, I'm here for one reason, and that's to get into the top ten of MasterChef. Being on the verge of the top ten, it's, uh, it's pretty special and <laughs> I really want that. The winner of the Catering for a Client Challenge is... ..the Red Team. <gasps> no, oh my goodness! The Red Team's won? You are our first six to go through into the top ten. We're in the top ten. Like, whoa. <laughs> I think excited will come later, but right now it's just pure shock. Red team, you were outcooked by the blue team yesterday. But you delivered tasty food. You also kept the client happy, and that is what this challenge was all about. Right, go and enjoy your lunch, and we'll see you later. Bye. I just feel shattered. It's like a big kick in the guts. Blues, it came down 
It's what Michael, who was your client, was looking for. Timely. It's a cross. Dishes were late. Light, no. Simple as that. I'm disappointed, but on the other hand, and I can feel it with the boys too, you know, we're, we're actually really proud of what we did. By the end of the day, four of you will have made it to the top 10 of MasterChef 2011. But one of you will have gone home. It's so close. It'd be lovely to be in the top 10. It's a tantalizing dream. Tomorrow night on MasterChef Australia. This is a perfectly ordinary taste test. But there's always a surprise. You'll be doing it blindfolded. <laughs> they can't be serious. This is ridiculous. The more ingredients they get right... I bite into a carrot and I know it's a carrot. ..the more they'll have to cook with. You're on the verge of the top ten. The question is, who wants this badly enough? Everyone wants to make it to the top ten. What are you going to do with that pin? 